Well, thank you to those responsible for inviting me. Um, uh, so, uh, again, I'm David Broadway. I'm from uh, the NASA, NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, and I'm here to talk about the uh, development of X-ray optical coatings at, at Marshall. Specifically, uh, one of the key technological challenges associated with the optical thin films is the stress in these films. And uh, it's critical con to control the stress. And uh, we've developed a very nice, simple device for the in-situ monitoring of the thin film stress during uh, thin film deposition and annealing processes. Uh, so a slight overview of the, of the presentation it includes uh, a look at our X-ray astronomy group at Marshall, an overview of our technology, uh, the current development status of this technology, of course, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about thin film stress. Uh, what is it? The technological challenges associated with it, uh, the motivation for the device development, and uh, some different thin film uh, in-situ stress measurement techniques that are commonly used today, and how our uh, measurement technique differs from these methods. And I'll compare sensitivity, some of the results of these measurements as they compare to published results, the advantages of uh, our method, and some of the target technology markets. This is very sensitive. Um, so our X-ray astronomy group at Marshall consists of, there's nine civil servants. We have three postdocs and one graduate student. And a large subset of this group consists of uh, experimentalists uh, who specializes in X-ray optic instrumentation. Uh, part of the forte of Marshall Space Flight Center is uh, replication. So we make uh, thin film uh, or thin shell uh, replications that are subsequently coated on the internal service, and these shells are nested and configured. And uh, so we do a large part of that at Marshall. So we do the alignment, the electroforming of the shells, as well as the coating. And the funding for this project has been uh, provided by, by NASA Astronomy and Physics Research and Analysis Program. So overview of the technology, again, we, we introduced a simple, uh, this is an optical method for the in-situ in measurement of the internal stress, uh, as I mentioned, during film growth and thermal annealing processes. Uh, in-situ measurement, the advantages are, are clear. Uh, we can more efficiently facilitate the control of the film stress uh, which is influenced by many process parameters, particularly for a process of thin film deposition called magnetron sputtering, which is very sensitive to substrate temperature, substrate bias, uh, process gas pressure, and uh, deposition rate, for example. Uh, I estimate that the current TRL level to be between four and five. We're currently using this instrument actively now to collect data. Uh, and and the, it's a very high, highly sensitive, simple, and uh, very easy to implement in any existing deposition system. And so I think it's a very nice instrument uh, for fostering more general use. Other methods that I'll show you are very, uh, they're not only expensive, but they require special modifications to the deposition chamber to implement these because they're optical methods and they require optical access to the substrate, which is in vacuum. This method uh, uses a fiber optic. So we eliminate those complications. So we've gotten to the point where we're, we're collecting data. We're starting to publish results. Um, a, a patent application has been filed uh, by NASA. Uh, we've submitted some manuscripts uh, awaiting peer review. For, um, uh, the next step, there's further steps in development, including uh, heating the substrate, and, and uh, applying it to rotating substrates, which is advantageous uh, because you can achieve better coating uniformity over a given substrate area. And this instrument could be very appealing uh, to a broad range of industries whose core competencies are in uh, thin film devices, uh, sensors, and optics. And I, as I mentioned, the device offers a significantly cheaper alternative uh, to currently commercial available systems without uh, sacrificing any sensitivity. And to give you an idea, a commercial system now is somewhere in the range of $100,000. We made this system and implemented 
for less than 10,000. So thin film stress, as I mentioned, it's a leading technological, technological challenge. And what's amazing about film, thin film stress is despite the small thickness of the film, that is sub nanometer thicknesses, the stress in the film can be enormous, a few gigapascals. And it's interesting to study because from an academic point of view, because it also gives information about the microcrystalline structure of the film. So it's an intrinsic property of the film. And we, we find that, particularly for thin film applications for X-ray optics, that the stress in the film can sometimes disqualify the use of an attractive material. And it can often be associated with a relevant device-specific performance characteristic. And I already mentioned this, that for magnetron spreading, it's very uh, sensitive to these various deposition parameters. So what's, what's the problem with this is, that the stress can cause delamination of the film, for one thing, from the substrate. And here are several examples of cracking and buckling of the film. But more importantly, for optical applications, is that the stress can necessarily distort the substrate. And I'll show you why this is a big problem. So this is sort of a, a spring analogy that I like to use for people who aren't that familiar with uh, film stress. It's quite simple to understand from this perspective. So you have a, the stress is, can be modeled as a spring system. So for example, you start with a spring that's in, in equilibrium. You stretch the spring, put the spring in tension, and you adhere it to a substrate. And then the spring wants to go back to its natural equilibrium state, which necessarily causes a deformation of the substrate. And there are two types of stress, basically, there's tensile and uh, compressive stress, and the sign simply changes in the, the, the curvature of the substrate. So, so why, is, why is it very important for, for us at Marshall Space Flight Center in the development of uh, full shell X-ray optics? Why is stress particularly challenging for us? So we, we fabricate these thin shells for, through a, a replication process. We start with a mandrel, it's polished, then we have electroform nickel onto that surface, and then we re release it from the mandrel. And subsequently, we have to coat the internal surface of this with a reflective, X-ray reflective coating. These shells are, sub, uh, are nested in order to, to gather more uh, photons from dim celestial sources. And as, as such, and due to the weight constraints, these shells are only a few hundred microns thin, in some cases as small as 40 microns. So we're de developing a process called differential deposition because at, after we remove this, there are necessarily, uh, due to substrate uh, distortions in the, from the internal stresses in the electroforming, as well as imperfections in the form mandrel, uh, there's always, they, the final figure always deviates from the, from the desired. And so we develop a process where we, we go in and we selectively sputter uh, material to fill in these gaps, so to speak, in an effort to increase the angular resolution of these uh, space telescopes into the next regime of sub arc second resolution. But if you put the film down and there's stress in the film, then you've destroyed what you're actually trying to attempt to do because the stress will distort the the substrate. So it's very important to come up with a way to deposit this film with very little stress in it. So this is just, this is the differential deposition process. So this is the process of correcting the figure error. But then, as I mentioned, we also want to put an X-ray reflective coating on the internal surface. And iridium is, is such a material, which is notoriously high in stress. So the measurement of thin film stress, how it's typically done. This is sort of an ex situ way that people often do thin film stress measurement. It's quite simple. As you start with, a, for example, a substrate, in this case, uh, a silicon wafer, 
And you take a profilometer and, and trace across two orthogonal directions and before the deposition process, and then you do a subsequent set of traces after the deposition process. And you subtract these two pre and post traces to get a curvature of the substrate. And then we invoke the well-known Stoney equation, which relates the curvature of the, of the substrate uh, through a proportionally constant, namely the bioxyl modulus and thickness of the substrate, to the stress. But you'll notice that the Stoney equation predicts a constant curvature, which means that the substrate deforms spherically. And for a given set of stress, we can always inv invoke this deformation mode by increasing the thickness of the substrate. So whatever the stress is, we can always make the substrate deformation spherical by increasing the substrate thickness. So here are some other ways that people measure the stress. Uh, one popular technique is called MOS, which stands for multi-beam optical stress sensor. So you start again with the substrate, and, and in this case, the substrate's in vacuum, and all these optical elements are, are outside of the vacuum chamber, which require optical access to the substrate through optical viewports. So you start with a laser, you run it through an etalon to produce multiple beams on the surface, and as the substrate deforms, the focal spots are displaced and captured on, and measured on a CCD camera, from which, again, from the change in curvature, you invoke the Stoney equation, you can calculate a stress value. Another common technique is a microcantilever approach, which is very similar in nature to uh, how AFM works. You start with a micro cantilever uh, and you shine a laser beam and you measure the deflection with a PS PSD and again you can deduce from geometry the change in curvature of the substrate during the deposition process. One of these problems is, one of the problems associated with this method is that if you're measuring semi-transparent films then you can get interference effects between the film and the substrate and uh, you lose intensity in the reflected beams and the CCD camera stalls because it can no longer track these spots. So this, this is one, uh, one of the drawbacks of this type of approach. And I think as I mentioned before, you know, you, you have to geometrically accommodate this optical scheme. So if you, if you have a deposition chamber, it has to be designed specifically for a system like this to accommodate it. And these are, these are quite expensive, as I mentioned. So our method is quite simple. So as I showed you before, the substrate deforms spherically. And it's simple to find the curvature of a spherical object simply by measuring the sagitta, right? I mean, this, they did this long ago with a device called the spherometer for, for measuring the curvature of, of lenses, right? So you have these three points that support the lens and then you have a central leg that comes down with a micrometer to measure the displacement and from this simple, very simple geometric relationship you can deduce what the curvature is. So instead of a mechanical means of measuring this displacement, we use a fiber optic displacement sensor with very high resolution, plus minus five nanometer resolution. So during, the dep so during the deposition process, the deposition comes this way. This is a silicon wafer. The wafer is double-sided polished. So both sides are polished, not just one. So we get good specular reflectivity from the backside of the substrate during the deposition. And from this, we have a relationship for the curvature, which, which changes during the deposition process. And we just invoke the Stoney equation again to calculate the stress. 
So here are some results that we achieved with this device. Uh, we looked at, for example, the stress in chromium films as a function of argon process pressure. And something very interesting happens at a critical value of argon pressure, you see that we can achieve zero stress for an optimal value of argon pressure. And this has already been, uh, this has been known since the 70s, of course, but uh, we achieved a, a very similar result to the, the published workings of, of Hoffman in this case. So here's, an, uh, here's a full plot of the intrinsic stress. It's very interesting because you have uh, the intrinsic behavior uh, during the deposition process where the film is growing. There, there also here is some thermal effects because the, the heat's generated during the deposition process necessarily uh, causes some uh, curvature or uh, thermal strain because of the changing substrate temperature. And then here is the moment of cool down where we shut the cathode off. And, and this region here during cool down is the stress is driven mo mainly by the mismatch in the thermal expansion coefficient between this film and the substrate. So all this information you can gather here. Where as the ex situ measurement I showed you before where you simply measure the curvature of the substrate before and after the process, you just get that point. Just that data point is all you get. Here, in, in here you get all this information about the microstructure of the film. So sensitivity, so how did, how did we uh, estimate the sensitivity of this device? So what we did was we ran a deposition process um, and collected data at two and a half uh, hertz during a 38 minute deposition process uh, for chromium. And so this was for a thermally equilibrium, uh, a substrate in thermal equilibrium. And we found the distribution of random noise that was attained that we think is associated with the random noise of the fiber optic, uh, from which we can calculate a full width of half, half max. And for 100, the, the sensitivity of course depends on the thickness of the substrate. And for 110 uh, micron thick substrate, we achieved uh, a sensitivity of, a sensitivity of uh, 0.015 newtons per meter. And how does that compare to other methods that are currently on the market or utilized? And uh, the MOS system, for example, that I showed you earlier, has a sensitivity of 0.05. Cantilever methods are commonly 0.02. And so ours is definitely, even from a conservative estimate, comparative to these values. So here's another idea of what the sensitivity of this instru uh, uh, instrument is capable of. Um, and this shows you that the instrument is definitely more uh, sensitive than the, than the resolution of the process parameters that we're using to deposit the film. In this case, we're varying argon pressure again. And this is the limit in the resolution of the argon pressure that I can control uh, about 0.02 millitor. And I'm bouncing, I'm bouncing around between the zero stress values, right? The plot I showed earlier showed you the zero stress. So for gas pressures above the critical pressure, we get tensile stress, which is associated with the positive slope. And for pressures below that, the negative slope indicates compressive stress. So somewhere in between here is the zero stress value. So highly sensitive. And you'll notice that the displacement that we're measuring here is only a few nanometers. And I told you before about iridium, how iridium is a very attractive material for X-ray optics, and the high stress um, is a problem. But we've already found, using this instrument, uh, the film growth regime, uh, particularly for compressive stress, that the stress passes through zero, about at the thickness we need to get good optical reflectivity. And it's very interesting because uh, there's two different growth regimes associated with ad atom mobility. For high ad atom mobility, um, we get this compressive regime and, and good quality films. By that I mean one of the features that we're very concerned with uh, is the surface roughness or surface topography of the, of the film because the specular reflectivity degrades exponentially as this roughness. So we had to go back and, and do some more work and, and look at AFM measurements and see what we're achieving in terms of roughness. But already, we've gone from a, 
two gigapascals to nearly zero stress in the iridium coating. And again, this, others has, have found similar results for other metals, but I think, uh, I haven't seen anything published yet on iridium coating. So we, we find something similar for the iridium, which is very exciting to us because now we can put down a, a stress-free coating of iridium potentially. Yeah, as I, and as I mentioned before, I mean, the application of this device, uh, my, my forte is, is, is optical thin films, but there are other applications outside of optics uh, where stre stress is a concern. I think probably you know, semiconductor industry is one of those. And so any, any industry that's working uh, whose core competency is involved with thin film sensors or devices would be interested in this uh, instrument. So again, uh, some of the key points, uh, in situ monitoring is, is clearly beneficial. We get so much more information from in situ measurement and compared to its ex situ counterpart. The measurement is real time so we can vary process controls and, and see immediate feedback in the stress of the film. Very low cost, orders of magnitude lower than uh, what's available commercially without any uh, loss of sensitivity. It's very flexible in, in, in the sense that uh, the system embodies the capability to look at uh, the stress in, during thermal annealing processes by adding a variable position micro heater, for example, to the, to the system. It's easily implemented. So optical access is gained with a fiber optic through a fiber optic feed through rather than viewports, which makes it simple to implement in just about any existing type of deposition system without the need to modify or specially design a system to accommodate it. So this is a contact, if anyone is interested, right now I think they're, commercial, uh, they're actively pursuing somebody to license this technology to. Um, and if you're interested, this is the contact, Sammy Neighbors at, at Marshall Space Flight Center. And that's it. Microheaters. Uh, we use uh, preheating substrates for uh, vapor deposition. Uh, is there some relationship there? Or? Well, are you interested in, in measuring the stress for vapor deposition? To, to, reduce, to reduce the uh, the stress, you pre if you preheat the substrate or pre-cooled substrate, then the yeah. In fact, we're looking at that now. We've recently, in fact, this last month. We're exploring uh, the capability to heat the substrate during deposition. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing that. Do you know what mechanisms you're planning on using? Electron beam. No, we we use uh, magnetron sputter deposition, but uh, I use a thermal, uh, radiantly heat uh, the substrate from from underneath. Uh, oh. Yeah, filament. Yeah. Yeah, so I did that calculation based on the sensitivity for about a 100 micron thick substrate. So for, for example, for a, for a film with a stress of 100 megapascals, I can measure three angstrom thickness film. So I can realize a film thickness change of around three angstroms for a, for a stress of 100 megapascal. Right. 
right, exactly. Well, so some of the articles I've seen uh, talk about that very thing uh, concerning the MOS system. So they're doing this with, with the MOS system. And as I mentioned, you know, it's clear that this technique is just as sensitive. So, so I don't think it's a question of sensitivity necessarily. So, so if from stress values, they're, they're looking at, at these type of things, the change in band gap and so forth. So, so I believe it probably, I don't know the details, of course, but I think it's, it's probably possible. Probably even, uh, I, I don't know much about the semiconductor industry, but probably even doping concentrations, you could probably realize a change in stress due to the doping, uh, change in doping concentration, for example, I would, I would guess. That brings up one more thing. <laughs>